Hi, this is Tom from Tom Build Stuff, and today I want to show you how to terminate Ethernet and phone keystone jacks and the tools you'll need. First, let's start by going over what we have. This blue jack is from monoprice.com. It's a fairly standard CAT5e keystone jack with the typical 110 type connectors on top, color coding reference labels on the sides for both T568A and T568B wiring standards, and an 8P8C port on the front. This next white jack is a CE TAC jack that's available from Home Depot. Very similar to Monoprice jack with the 110 connectors on top, color coding on the sides as well as on the top between the 110 posts, and an 8P 8C port on the front. These are pretty decent keystone jacks and in stock at most Home Depots if you need them at the last minute. This last jack I'm using for my phone ports. It's CAT3 rated, but I'm using CAT5B cables for my phone lines because they're not much different in price. The top 110 connectors have room for only three pairs of wires, and the front port is a smaller 6P6C that works with modular foam plugs, which is my intended use for this. This plastic tool is a keystone jack holder. I think it's very important to have, and it only costs about 8 bucks from Amazon. I'll post a link to the description, and it, this will work with all three of the jacks I have above. This is my Klein Comfort Grip punch down tool. The tips can be removed by twisting them. The punch down force can be set to high or low by turning this dial on the bottom. In most cases you'll be using it on low. It's marked yellow and red with yellow indicating the cut side of the tip. The tip the kit comes with is a reversible 66 and 110 cutting bit. There are other types of tips you can get, like a combination 110 cutting and non-cutting tip. We'll be using the 110 cutting side of the included tip for the keystone jacks. There's a lot I like about this punch down tool. It's shaped like a screwdriver which makes it very comfortable to use. It also has a very long shaft that makes it easy to get into tight spots like, you know, a really messy 110 panel. The kit comes with a belt holster which includes a spudger, a pouch for holding tips, and what I really like is this pocket that holds a pair of snips nicely. I'm using these with snips which are a little shorter than other snips and I find them easy to use for Cat 5e cable. The first thing I want to talk about is this keystone holder. When you're punching down keystones it can be a little dangerous. When you're installing jacks in your home or even a commercial setting you might be working in tight spaces like behind furniture or under a desk. You don't always have a solid surface to rest the jack on easily. Some people try to use the floor or even a wall, but even then you risk damaging the wall or floor. Sometimes when you're trying to punch down the wires, the punch down tool can slip. You can mar the wall or floor or worse, if you're holding it in your hand, you can get a pretty nasty cut. This actually happened to me before I got the holder and let me tell you, that 110 tip is pretty sharp. The keystone holder is pretty easy to use and works with all the keystone jacks I have and should work with any standard CAT5e or CAT6 keystone jack. I'll show you how each of the ones I have goes in. I'm not sure if it works with the Leviton jacks, but it does have some additional recesses for high density jacks which I'm not using. There are two vertical posts on the front of the stand where the front of the keystone jack goes in and obviously you want the 110 connections facing up. Squeeze the jack in between those two posts and press it down so it clicks into place. That's a monoprice jack. To remove it, you just push the one post to the side and pull up on the jack and it comes out easily. These are the CE Tech Jacks that I got from Home Depot. Pretty good jacks and not a bad choice if you don't want to wait for mail order if you need them quickly. They slide right in and out. Finally, the CAT36 conductor phone jack. This will fit, but it takes a little more effort. It's a little longer, so it takes some time to get it in, and you have to do a combination of pushing it in and sliding it forward, sometimes starting from the back and pushing it down works. It's not as securely held as the other jacks, because it's a little taller, and you need to keep your thumb over it to make sure it stays down, but you can get it to work, and it's better than just holding it in your hand. Now we'll go over how to punch down the Keystone Jack. We'll use the Home Depot jack and start by putting it in the keystone stand. Make sure it clicks in securely before continuing. Next we'll grab our cable and snips. Hold the snips with the lower ring through your ring finger. Score the outer jacket a few inches down then break it off. 
Grab a firm hold of the pull string and use it to rip a slit down the outer sheath a few inches to expose enough of the wires to work with. Snip off some of the excess. The reason we use a pull string is because there's a chance of nicking the wires when stripping the outer insulation, and that can cause a decrease in speed on the cable, so it's best to just sacrifice a few inches of cable to ensure a good connection. Keep the pairs twisted together, but separate out the four pairs. This is for my home, and the TIA residential spec says to use the T568A wiring standard. There's a misconception about the different wiring standards T568A and T568B. Some people think that T568B is newer and better and should be used instead of T568A, but that's not the case. There's a TIA 568A and TIA 568B standards document, and in that case, B does supersede A, but that doesn't apply to the wiring standards. Most people use T568B in commercial applications, but either is fine, really. For residential, the spec says to use only T568A for Ethernet wiring. There's really no major benefit to either, but T568A is more compatible with USOC phone wiring, so I like it. I have a rant about that on my blog somewhere in the past. So now we have the four twisted pairs. I just separate them out to get them roughly where they need to be, holding down the cable with my thumb. I keep the pairs twisted because the spec says you shouldn't have more than, I forget, I think it was a quarter inch or half inch above twisted wires. So I just open up the twists a little and then slide each wire into their respective slots. That way I minimize the untwisted pairs. On the side of the jack you'll find color codes for both T568A and T568B. On one side we have the blue and brown pairs. For A or B they're punched down the same either way. On the other side of the jack go the orange and green pairs. For T568A they go one way, and for B, they go the other way. So, the only difference between the two is the orange and green pairs are reversed. For the blue pair, it goes blue and then white-blue. On the same side as the blue, it's a brown pair, which goes brown and white-brown. And again, we're just going to separate out the pairs and press them down. Again, we'll make a small opening in the twist to get the wires into their own slots. And sometimes using the spudger can help with this, especially if you're doing CAT6. Sometimes you have to twist the pairs to get the colored wire where it needs to be and the white wire where it needs to be, but that's not too difficult. Then we'll do the same for the green pair, trying to keep the wires untwisted as much as possible. Double check all the wires are in the correct spot and use a punch down tool to punch down the wires. Make sure the yellow cut side is on the correct side, the outside of the jack. On keystone jacks, I usually punch down each wire twice. The first time is to make sure the wire is seated properly in the 110 terminal. On keystone jacks, I usually punch down each wire twice. The first time is to make sure the wire is seated properly in the 110 terminal. The second time, I hold the punch down tool at a very slight angle towards the outside of the jack to make sure the wire gets cut. You can do the angled cut right after the first cut for speed, but for demonstration purposes, I thought it would be easier to do two passes. And that's pretty much it. We have our keystone jack wired properly, and now it's just time to install it in our wall plate. 